Today I'm going to speak to you about the imaging of a solitary pulmonary nodule essentially in a patient above the age of 35 and we'll use a typical case to try and understand how this works. Let's look at this 52 year old lady who went for a health checkup and there is a lesion here try and look for it um, and identify it. Remember that as far as lesion detection is concerned the pickup is a variable factor that depends more on the radiologist's experience than expertise. It's one of the few times where the larger or the higher the number of scans that you've seen uh, the better normally your eye is at uh, picking up nodules and therefore the 10,000 hours rule that's been popularized by Malcolm Gladwell actually works here. There is a tendency to overread nodules in countries where granulomas are not common and in countries like India where granulomas are common we tend to underread uh, nodules. Clearly all radiographs should be uh, performed using high KV uh, techniques and we know in our country that that is not necessarily true and many physicians prefer black and white radiographs but nevertheless it's much better to have um, standard high KV uh, radiographs that would allow us to pick up nodules better and clearly CR and more importantly DR images would allow manipulation um, and therefore a higher rate of detection. And in this lady you can clearly see a 2.2 centimeter sized nodule in the right mid zone. This is a lady who's completely asymptomatic, has no risk factors, does not live in a smoking environment and is a typical uh, central Mumbai um, housewife uh, doing standard house related work. What would you do next? Assume that um, this is India, it's probably an old granuloma, she has no risk factors, let's do nothing. Or uh, get aggressive and assume that all of these nodules are malignant unless proved otherwise. Or say that let's wait for three to four weeks and give a course of antibiotics or start on anti-tuberculous treatment or do some further investigation, right? Think for yourself but perhaps one of the first things you would want to do is to confirm the intrapulmonary location and one of the ways to do that is a lateral radiograph and here you can see this nodule very well um, uh, in, in the lower lobe it's seen well on the lateral, it's seen well on the frontal and we know that this is um, intrapulmonary. However um, CT is simpler perhaps uh, to do than to call back a patient the second time and CT would tell us very very clearly uh, whether a specific uh, nodule is in the lung or not and here you can see an ovoid calcified lesion in the minor fissure which is probably an old granuloma and can be forgotten similarly another patient who has a pleurobased lesion that on CT is completely calcified and is probably an old calcified hematoma um, or infection and currently has no clinical relevance but sometimes we're faced with situations like this and this typically is a manifestation of hyposkilia. You can see a nodule in the left upper and mid zone. This patient was referred for a CT guided biopsy quite a few years ago. Uh, the girl had neurofibromatosis 1 and as is happening more and more often now the, the physician did not have the time to examine the patient which if he had he would have realized that there is a cutaneous neurofibroma that you see here uh, that obviously projected over the lungs on the radiograph um, and created this appearance. This was another lady who flew all the way in from Indore um, quite a few years ago again to get this lesion biopsied um, and it actually looks like it could even be in the lungs on the frontal and the lateral but the CT showed that this was nothing uh, but fracture callus but for some reason uh, this was misread and, and she'd come over. So these these are all very very important issues and we need to make sure uh, that the nodule is in the lung for us to follow the algorithm. Now a CT scan was done, this was a contrast and end study and you can see that the nodule is well within the lung and is situated in the posterior segment uh, of the right upper lobe. <clears throat> so now that we know it's in the lung, what would you do next? Again, 
say that so what if it's in the lung uh, so what if we've done a CT um, it's in the lung it could still be a granuloma because she's a 52 year old asymptomatic individual or again just assume that everything like this should be malignant unless proved otherwise um, or again start giving some antibiotics um, or AKT so what would be your next step I think clearly we need to know whether there is a way to decide whether this nodule is benign or malignant. And there are three criteria for benignity that, if present, can allow us to not further evaluate the nodule. A is diffuse calcification, B is complete absence of enhancement um, on a contrast enhanced study which really correlates with complete absence of uptake on a PET CT and absence of growth over two years. So here you have a nodule that is completely diffusely calcified and you can really completely forget about it. On the other hand, this doesn't count. We have a mass with a peripheral small calcific focus, which is probably an old engulfed granuloma. And clearly this does not mean that the lesion is benign. Another patient here who had a nodule in April 2006, it's pretty much the same size two years later. It is also completely diffusely calcified. This is benign and nothing further needs to be done. Here's another patient who has a nodule. In the right upper lobe, you can see that it does not enhance at all on a contrast enhanced study, in which case we can assume this to be benign and nothing further needs to be done. So what happened to our patient? Uh, we asked her for old radiographs. She came back with a radiograph done in May, um, at which time she had some cough, cold, fever. This nodule had been missed, but you can clearly see that there is at least a threefold increase in volume. Please remember that an increase in diameter by 1.25 times usually translates into a doubling of volume. So there's almost a tripling of volume here in about two and a half months. And the nodule was enhancing uh, the to about 80 um, in this patient. So that was something that um, told us that this lesion is definitely not benign. Now, what do you think this could be? Granuloma, malignancy, or something else? And how do we go about trying to figure this out? And what exactly would be our next steps? We now know that this lesion does not show any criteria of benignity and hence we should assume this to be of indeterminate etiology. We don't know what this is at this stage. It could be an active granuloma. It could still be a malignant neoplasm. But the very fact that we don't know what it is, that it is of indeterminate etiology, implies that we need to go ahead and get some kind of histopath proof to figure out what this is, right? So what would be the next steps? You'll do trial of treatment. Again, just assume this to be granuloma because she's asymptomatic or do a CT guided biopsy or say, no, the CT scan guys never give us good answers. Let's do a bronchoscopic guided biopsy or go to the other extreme and say, I'm assuming this to be malignant. It seems to be operable. Let's just go ahead and do a lobectomy. Clearly, we need histopath. And therefore, perhaps the best thing to do in this peripheral lesion is a CT-guided biopsy. You can put a needle straight inside, as you can see here, and take multiple cores. A couple of words about doing a CT-guided biopsy. It should always be a core biopsy and never an FNAC. That's absolutely paramount. FNACs have no role to play today. You need a minimum of five to six cores also because we need material both for immunohistochemistry and if it is an adenocarcinoma for mutation studies, we now know that if there is significant mutation, they will respond to tyrosine kinase inhibitors when chemotherapy is being given. So all of this should be done at one sitting. What we do is use a gun cannula technique and there'll be another video presentation in the next few weeks explaining all this in more detail. But you can see here the stillet in the cannula. That's the gun. The cannula with the stillet is introduced into the lesion. The stillet is removed and then the gun is placed into the cannula. And since this is a single puncture, the cannula remains within the nodule. You can take multiple cores without having to puncture into the lesion or through the lung more than once. And we typically, or at least I uh, take at least eight to ten cores uh, every time 
I do a lung nodule biopsy. And typically, if you have an in-room monitor, you have a foot pedal, it's so much simpler and easier. And if you have CT fluoroscopy, that's even better. So this eventually turned out to be an adenocarcinoma. And then she was further worked up with PET-CT, contrast MR brain. She was operable and eventually had a lobectomy. The fundamental idea when dealing with a solitary nodule greater than 8 millimeters in a patient above the age of 35 is not to miss malignancy. Now, there are various ways in which you can figure out the pretest probability of benignity um, or malignancy in patients. However, none of these are definitive criteria. If you can prove benignity, and that happens when you have no growth over two years, you have a diffusely calcified lesion and complete absence of enhancement. Even a thin rim of enhancement doesn't count. When you have complete absence of enhancement, then you can assume this to be benign and typically you can forget about it. However, if none of these criterion is present, then you assume the lesion to be malignant unless proved otherwise and all of these lesions should be biopsy. Today we have the skill sets to be able to biopsy every such nodule that is present within the lung. This is a flow chart that pretty much um, puts together all of this practically when we are faced with a nodule in a radiograph and you can go through this. I'll have this up for another uh, 10 to 15 seconds. But as far as the solitary nodule assessment is concerned, it's one of the few places where it is better to blindly follow an algorithm so that we don't make mistakes and we don't miss potential tumors or neoplasms. Every time we try and use clinical acumen, when we try and say that in my 20 to 30 years of experience, I have seen this to behave in a particular manner or in X or Y particular manner, you have a tendency to go wrong. Very simply put, nodule above the age of 35, Try and see if there are definitive criteria of benignity, which are three if there aren't, assume it to be malignant and biopsy it. That's really as simple as it can get. Right? Just another couple of minutes on some characteristic lesions which sometimes allow you to make definitive diagnosis. Here is a patient with a nodule in the right apex. Um, sure most of you have already seen the crescent that you see here and that tells us that this is a fungal ball within a cavity. Another patient asymptomatic came with a nodule. Uh, think for a second what this might be. If you see carefully, you can see these tubular uh, structures that are kind of attached to the nodule. The CT scan showed multiple vessels and this is an arteriovenous malformation. And once in a while you get a slightly ill-defined nodule that on CT shows a comet tail appearance. This represents an entity called rounded atelectasis. And all of these, when you see this, there are definite modes of treatment, there are different management, definite management strategies, and you can sometimes make these spot or definitive diagnoses um, on imaging. Right. Thank you for your attention. Um, if you need uh, to get in touch with me, these are the ways that you can do that. This presentation is also available uh, without sound um, at slideshare.net slash bhavanjay um, and I'd be happy to interact with you.